Hello, second grade mathematicians. Right now, you are getting ready to subtract two digit numbers. That's right. You're gonna see a number that has a digit in the ones place and the tens place. Now, these types of math problems can seem a little scary, even intimidating for a mathematician who isn't prepared. But we know that prepared mathematicians have a toolbox that are chock full of different strategies. A strategy is a way that helps you solve a math problem, and there are tons of different strategies. Now, which strategy do you use? Well, here's the thing, it really doesn't matter. What's important is to find the strategy that works best for you. So mathematicians learn a bunch of different strategies. So when they are faced with a math problem, they can say, aha, I know exactly which one to use, and they pull it out and they're able to use it. Today, we're gonna start learning different strategies to use when solving two-digit subtraction problems. Are you ready for them? All right, here we go. Today's strategy is all about taking a math problem and breaking it down into simpler, more manageable problems. So instead of seeing this really big problem going, oh no, what do I do? We instead look at that math problem and go, hmm, I see a problem here, I see a problem here and here. So we're breaking it down into manageable chunks and then we solve the big problem in the end. We call this the break apart strategy. So we're taking apart a problem and breaking it apart into smaller, more manageable steps. So by the end of today, you will be able to confidently say, I can subtract two digit numbers using the break apart strategy. All right, mathematicians, let's take the math problem 52 take away 16. In the break apart strategy, we're going to take this math problem and manage it into smaller math problems. Now the first step we're gonna do is look at the smaller number, the number 16. We leave 52 alone because in a subtraction problem, we're taking something away. In addition, we put something together, so we look at it a little differently. We want the larger number there because 52 is what we are subtracting from. My first step is to look at the number 16. This is the number I am taking away from 52. Now, I want to look at the values of the tens place and of the ones place. And I think to myself, what is the value of 110? And that is 10. Then I think, what is the value of six ones? And that is six. Now, you might be saying to yourself, oh, Mrs. Olmstead, that's simply expanded form. And you are correct. 10 plus six, what is that in expanded form? 16. Now that is important. I just broke the number 16 down into a simpler step. But I'm gonna take it a step further because I notice here that my number two in the ones place of 52 is smaller than the six here. Now this number is smaller than this number. I need to break it down a little bit further. So I'm gonna break down my six. Now I need to think six, hmm, what can I break that down to? Now I could say three plus three equals six, I could say one plus five, and all of that seems fine and dandy, however, this two tells me that I need to use it here to break it down. So I'm gonna put my two here. Now I need to think to myself, two plus what number is going to give me six? Or six take away two gives me a number. And if I know my facts, I know that number is four. And again, Mrs. Olmstead, you might be thinking, oh my gosh, Mrs. Olmstead, that's simply a fact family. And you are correct. Now I have all these numbers here and I've broken this apart. What does this mean? All right, the first thing I wanna do is subtract a 10. And here's my 10 here. I'm gonna look at this, so I'm gonna scoop it on up. And I'm gonna think to myself, 50, oops, what am I doing? Sometimes I just get carried away, don't I? 52 minus 10. 52 minus 10. Now, if you're taking away a 10, all I have to do is look in the tens place. And what is one 10 less than 52? Well, well, let's think. Well, one less than five would be four. And my two in the ones place stays the same. I'm at 42. But I'm not done because I have this number 
here. So keeping with the number 42, I make a new math problem. I wrote 42, take away two. That's what I write down. 42 take away two. Now this time I'm only subtracting the ones place. Here's my ones place. Taking away two ones, I'm now at 40. But I'm not done because remember when I broke down my number, I broke it down one other time and there is the number four. So now I'm gonna keep, I'm at the number 40. Remember that's where I ended. I write 40 take away four. So I have to go backwards four places. So let's think, hmm, going backwards. If I count backwards, I'm at 39, 38, 37, and 30. Six. So my answer to 52, take away 16 is 36. I had to break it down an awful lot to get it to that answer up here. But they were smaller, more manageable problems. I didn't subtract anything more than 10. Now here you might go, oh, but I had to go backwards and going backwards is so hard. But when you see a zero in the ones place, think of it as a 10. What is 10 take away four? Six, and we are going backwards. So that number four in the tens place is one less 10, which makes it a three, 36. Now that might seem complicated. So let's try one more again. All right, let's try another math problem. And this time we see 73 take away 25. Let's break it down into smaller, more manageable chunks. The first thing I wanna do is break apart the number 25 because I'm leaving 73 alone. It's my bigger number, and anything I take away, I am taking away from my largest number. When you write a subtraction problem, the whole is always first, and the whole is the biggest part. Now, if you caught on to the last math problem, we noticed that when we broke apart the number 25, that we were gonna use expanded form. So I think about the values. What is the value of two tens? That is 20. What is the value of five ones, and that is? Five. So 20 plus five equals 25. Expanded form. Now I wanna break it down even further. So I'm gonna study here. Now my number three is smaller than my five one, so I need to break it down a step further. So let's see. Five, break it down into a smaller number. So I'm breaking apart the five. I don't need to think too hard about this because the three in the ones place is 73 tells me that there's gonna be a three here. All right, now what's my missing number? Some of you might think of this as a fact family. Others might see it as a diagram, but think to yourself, three plus what number is gonna give you five? Or five take away three equals a number. What is that gonna be? Two. So now I have all the numbers I am subtracting. I will be subtracting 20, then three, then a two. You hear with me? 20, three and two are all those numbers I am subtracting. Let's start with the first one. I'm gonna scoop this guy up right here because this is where I'm starting. 73 take away 20. Now, remember there is a zero in the ones place. So we really are just gonna be looking in the tens place and I'm taking away two tens. Here's my tens. 73, I have seven tens and I'm taking away two tens. What number am I at now? You've got it, five. So the answer to 73 take away 20 is 53. Now I'm not done, because remember the next number I'm going to subtract is this three. Ah, you might notice that there's a three in the ones place. Very good reason for that. So I left off at 53. And now I'm subtracting three. 53, take away three. Just look at the ones place, subtracting three ones. If I take away those three ones, I'm at zero. So now I'm at 50. All right, almost done, but not quite because I broke that five down into another number and that is two. So now I'm at 50, take away two. Thinking backwards, counting backwards, which two numbers come before 50? So I'm thinking backwards, nine, eight, because remember, that zero actually means 10. 
10 tick away, two is eight. And if I'm going backwards by one place in the tens place, that is going to be a four. So I'm at 48. So 73 take away 25 is 48. Aha, uh -huh. fantastic. Now on the break apart strategy, sometimes you don't need to break it down as much as you would in another number. So this is an example of when you would say, ah, oh, stop, don't break me down anymore. So here we see 56 take away 33. We're gonna start the same way we did by using expanded form. Thinking about the value in 33. Again, remember, we leave the larger number alone. Don't do anything to it. And the value of three tens is 30. The value of three ones is three. And then I need to study my six and my three. Because the number six is bigger than the three, I don't need to do anything. If it was the opposite, if this number, my ones in the larger number was smaller than this number, I'd break it apart again. But because it's smaller, I leave it alone. I only need to break this apart one time. So let's solve it. I'm gonna scoop this one up because I know this is my first math problem, and then this one will be my second math problem. So I think to myself, 86 take away 30. And I like this problem because there's a zero in the ones place, so I'm really only subtracting the tens place. Now here's my tens, I underlined them so I can really, really hone in on them. Eight, take away three. If I'm taking away three tens from that eight, I'm now at five tens. And I didn't take anything away from the ones place because of that zero, so I'm at 56. All right, step two. Now that I'm at 56, I'm gonna start with that number. And I simply need to subtract my three. This time I'm focusing in on the ones. Six, take away three. Oh, I could do that. That is simple. That is three, because three plus three equals six. But don't forget, I still have five tenths. So 56 take away three is 53. So in this math problem, I really didn't need to break it down any further because again, remember, this number in the ones place was larger than when I broke down my number. All right, boys and girls, I can't wait for you to try some of these. So there you have it, mathematicians. That's how you use the break apart strategy to solve a two digit subtraction problem. I hope this helped you, and now you have a brand new strategy to add to your mathematician toolbox. I can't wait for you to join me again where we learn another strategy for two digit subtraction. By the end of the next couple of weeks, you'll have so many different strategies that you will be very well prepared. All right, mathematicians, go out there and solve different problems. See you soon.